fans, it's that time again for Burt Wojcik, Justin Snyder, and Earl Hoon Jr. to bring you all the latest news in the Spring Car world right here on BA Spring Car Live. Everybody and welcome back to another great episode of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Bear Hill Gang TV. Of course, you know I'm Earl Hoon Jr. That's Justin Snyder, and all the way down to the left, Mr. Burt Wojcik. And uh, boys, we have a great episode here tonight, Justin. Yeah, we've got the All Stars coming in. It's the first, you know, we've we uh, we've been all about racing starting this year, and we've had it, but we've had the weather. But now it's kind of the first. The real racing, you know, we got the yeah. all-star circuit of champions coming in. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're not going to win at the Grove. It doesn't happen. But, <laughs> hey, I'm going to get that out of the way early. But, um, yeah, they're coming in. Uh, it looks like great weather for the first yep. time all season. And um, how can you not be excited if you're a race fan? Absolutely. I'm glad Justin mentioned on that. The Articat all-star circuit of champions presented by Mobile One will be in here this weekend to officially kick off their season. It's going to be the first two, possibly three, if they get Bedford in on Sunday, point-paying races. Yeah, I only see two getting in, to be honest with you, looking at the forecast. But uh, luckily, it's our two up here 
in Central PA. And, of course, we get him up at the Sweet Palace for the Keith Kaufman Classic coming up on Saturday afternoon, which we will be there with our friends at Speed Shift TV yep. doing a uh, live free pre-race show for all you folks over on uh, Speed Shift's Facebook page. Absolutely. Uh, we will be live up at the Port Royal Speedway for the Keith Kaufman Classic. Uh, for the Articat All-Star Circuit of Champions presented by Mobile One and the Pennsylvania Posse. And also, don't sleep on them, the Route 35 Moonshine Camo Ooh. Super Late Models are going to be in attendance as well. We will be doing a live pre-race show starting at 3.30 behind the uh, new main grandstands uh, where we did it last year for Tuscarora 50. And we have a great lineup there. We will uh, unveil that here a little bit in the show. But we got to get through tonight's show, which we will have last week's winner at the Lincoln Speedway, Tyler Rush. Yeah, you know, I'd be interested to talk to them. You know, they kind of um, – last year was a real big step for them to go yes. out. Not, I mean, not only did they get in 410s full-time, but they went all-star circuit of champions, and they threw their feet straight to the fire. Um, he seemed to have, be getting a lot more speed at the end of the year. I think he knocked off a couple fast times there late in the season, and uh, he unfortunately he had the accident, and, he, you know, he got injured. Um, I think his brother stepped in there at the end. But I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do with an even bigger talent field that is the all-stars. I mean – if they thought they had a challenge last year, this year is a real big test. Absolutely. They're going to bring in 20 regulars that's going to officially follow that tour. And speaking of talent, this kid has a lot of talent. He's going to come on here a little bit later, all the way from California, Carson Macedo. Boy, we have a lot of California guys on here early in the season, don't we, Earl? But this kid, I tell you what, there's a lot of promise for this kid here. I mean, he has a, a great track record here. You know, uh, he got an all-star win last year at the, out in Lincoln, Illinois. 12 wins in 2017. Uh, USAC rookie midget or midget of the year for the uh, yeah midget of the year, rookie of the year for the midgets. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh, that's terrible. Burns. He's got a <laughs> he's got a long resume so far in a very young career, Earl. Absolutely, and it's going to get better. And hey, maybe he can pick one off this weekend. He won't do it at the Grove. Uh, well, we'll see. Hey, you know what? To be honest, I I. I that is a big old uh, column zero in the All-Stars. They have yet to ever win at a main event at Williams Grove. But they've been close a couple times. Could it be the year for them to actually get that numero uno in the win column? If they're going to do it, I see it more happen at the Jack Gun. I really? See, I could see it happen. You know, what's it? You got triple 20s. Yeah. I mean, that's three chances for them to win. Here you only got one chance to win on Friday night for them to come into the Grove and take some money out of here. So I could see it being more at the Jack Gun if they were going to do it. This Absolutely. Year. Well, fans, like I said, welcome to another great episode. You are located in the fully injected motorsports fan zone. If you have any uh, questions, comments, or anything to our drivers here on Lady, make sure you put them in the comment section below. But as tradition, the top of the show, we will be doing our weekend recap presented by X1 Race Cars. Boys, it was a great weekend uh, last weekend. It was good to see this guy win at Williams Grove. Corey Haas takes home the win. I tell you what, what a feature this was, Earl. I mean, Corey Haas earned this one, even though, yes, it was from the pole, but he earned this one. He had to hold off Brian Monteith charging through, who actually made it through turn one and two this time. How about it? How about it? The, the hill went nuts. Everyone on the hill was going crazy. Monteith actually made a lap at the Grove, and then he held on there to challenge Corey Haas for the lead in what was probably race of the year so far. Yeah, it, it was pretty good. I cannot uh, wait for tomorrow. So Brian Monteith did finish second over Rick Lafferty. Good job for Slick Rick over and Lucas Wolf with uh, fourth, and Greg Hodnett Rounded out the top five, and then everybody went up 322 westbound to the speed pass. Well, you did anyway. Well, I did. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Phil, Phil went. We all, we saw a damn good show. I don't know about you guys, but we saw a hell of a show. Up I got roll speedway. So I couldn't do anything. How about I, I, it? I wish somebody would have Facebook lived it. Ha, yeah. Oh. 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 Stir the pot already. Don't bud. worry. We'll get into that later, folks. Uh, <laughs> Dave Blaney, good for Dave, takes home the checkered flag at Port Royal. I'll tell you what, a few years back, he came in here in his 10 car, and he picked off the opening day win. I want to say this was his fourth career win at Port Royal, which is a little nuts considering how long he's been doing yeah. this, and he only has four wins at the Speed Palace. But new car, um, unexpected. They weren't coming he has in a great here. Crew he kind of showed up here, really, um, yeah. on a whim. It was the only place racing. Kudos to Central PA. But um, big win. So um, I think that's pretty awesome. I think yeah. – um, it's definitely got to give him some confidence that he can do this on a full-time basis again to come in here and beat the Pennsylvania regulars and a pretty stout field of cars. Absolutely, and Lucas Wolf uh, finished second. And, boys, it came right down to the line. There was a late race restart. Hodnett was the leader at that time. Blaney went underneath him, slid him for the lead. Then a couple laps later, Lucas Wolf got by Greg Hodnett. And then, for some reason, Dave, uh, Dave could not get through lap traffic, and Lucas was coming and coming and coming and coming. And before you know it, they're side-by-side -side going into turn one. Uh, Lucas slides him in the one. 
Uh, Blaney turns the car. They haul the mail down the back straightaway. Lucas slides Dave Blaney again for the win, coming off a of four. But, however, he must have spin his tires, did some. Blaney turned the car, beats him right back to the line. That sounds reminiscent of a race from last year, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The Labor Day Classic. That sounds exactly right the way that ended. Right down to the line. It was a great race. Uh, Greg Hodnett finished third. He's having some good uh, success so far in the year. Anthony Macri, good job, Anthony. I expect some big things out of you this weekend. And another player, he could be the champion or, or at least a contender for the Weikert Livestock 410 Sprint Car Champion uh, this year. Dylan Sisney gets another top five finish. How about that in that X1 race car? I tell you what, they made a great transition over to them this year, and they are doing some phenomenal stuff so far to start the year off at the Port Royal Speedway, and I expect some great things for them this coming weekend. Absolutely. Uh, Ryan Linder is building some good X1 race cars so far, and, and Dylan Sisney is definitely proving it. Then, uh, also, that same time on Saturday, down at Lincoln Speedway, he's going to be on a little bit later. Tyler Etch takes home the win. Yes, sir. I tell you what, this could be almost a full redemption for him. You know, as Justin alluded earlier, had the wreck, bro uh, broke up bones without the rest of the year, and uh, came back strong. Been pretty much running Central PA this entire season so far. Hasn't really had the best of luck to start the season, I guess you would say here. But this weekend, it really turned around as he comes up and gets the win down to Lincoln Speedway. His first ever 410 sprint car win anywhere, I believe, over Brian Monteith, Freddie Raymer, Alan Crimes, and Corey Hawes. And, boys, that is a tough field to hold off to get your Ford's 410 win. That is, that is, that, yeah, that's a great field. Good for Tyler. Good, good, very good. good to see him get that win. Hopefully he gains some momentum and he can put on a good show. This weekend, and then obviously the World of Outlaw Craftsman Sprint Car Series also had a show out in Arizona. That was a hell of a show, too. I mean, this Arizona Speedway, it's really shown some good racing, whether it's the World of Outlaw Craftsman Sprint Car Series or the USAC Western Sprint Cars or the USAC Amazon National Sprint Car Series. Great race so far. At the start of the show, we it looked like it was going to be another night of Sheldon Hans. She'll maybe kind of catching up on dying shots, taking the lead. Not so fast. Sheldon had a late race uh, spin in turn four oh, there, man. fell to the rear, and uh, that actually gave the lead to, I believe, Shane Stewart. But then Joey Saldana was charging hard, but so was Donnie Schatz from 12th. And Donnie Schatz uh, held off a hard charge to Joey Saldana in the closing laps over Logan Schuhart, who came from, I believe, 16th to get the KSE hard wow, charger once them. again. And Shane Stewart, Corey Lyson, around top five. Yeah, great well, field. Going, and I saw, um, you know, I was listening to an interview with Joey Saldana earlier in the week, and he mentioned that to start the season out, they weren't really ready with that Rudine car. Um, so he was running his own equipment to start mm -hmm. the season out, which basically with a, with a body that said Rudine. Yeah. Um, so this has basically been the last week. It's been the first week that teams have really been running their own equipment, been gelling, and the, the results have been there. I think two top fives in a row for them. Um, he said he's really – I think we're going to see him here in PA this week because the weather doesn't look great. Uh, with the outlaws, I right, believe. Right. So uh, yeah, he's planning on coming Jackson in. Jackson Natural is supposed to be this weekend, he right? Pretty much, mm -hmm. um, he pretty much said, you know, the car owner entered them into both series and said, let's see what the hell happens. We're going to go wherever wherever the racing's at. So. I like it. Uh, don't forget Tim Schaefer should be in here this weekend yeah. as well. And, and, folks, there was one more race last week, and it was another race one down at the Baps Motor Speedway. I tell you what, this one here – I was impressed with. I've been. I was looking for this one probably the most out of the entire weekend to see what the surface would have done for the four tens uh, at the Bass Motor Speedway. And Phil, yes, it was cold. It was cold as hell, <laughs> folks. If you were there, uh, if you watch on the cushion, I envy you. But yet yeah, we had a great time in the infield down there, uh, helping out with the push trucks. Thanks again, to everyone down at the Bass Motor Speedway. Uh, you all do a great job. But I tell you what, le when Lance Luis and Aaron Reitzel got out front there, you thought it was over. I mean, Aaron had a, a rocket ship. Lance was coming on strong. Lance got him then. But I started to notice him fading, and they got a yell there. And I, I saw Danny Dietrich trying to pick guys off. I went over to Pork there in the infield. I said, Danny's going to win this. And then sure enough, on the late race restart there after a red flag, Lance gave Danny the bottom. Yeah, that was weird. I, I never I, – I would never expect Lance to give at the bottom, especially at Babs. From what I understand uh, – the Kreitz team potentially maybe hurt her motor yes, yes, due there to was, the cold. Is that there, true? There was some fluid on the front stretch there. I noticed it did look uh, it didn't look good on the front stretch there, but it made it to the end there. And Dan Dietrich picked up his first win at Babs, his second win overall in the season over Lance Suisse. Greg Honnett, Parker Price Miller from twentieth, and Anthony Macri round out top five. There's two guys or three. Or actually, I'm going to talk about uh, third through fifth there. Yeah, I'll start with fourth. Parker Price Miller. Uh, missed the call for, I guess, something went on there that he missed the call, had to go to the back of the field, started sh shotgun 20th on the field, and worked his way up to fourth, Earl. If that's to show what kind of racing could be on this surface down at Babs, I don't know what will. It's, it's crazy. 
I'm glad that Colt and Scott are doing big things. I can't wait till it warms up yeah. and I don't have to work on a Sunday and get out there uh, and catch a great race. Well, folks, that's going to bring up the Champion Racing Oil Central PA Sprint Car Point Series presented by Hoseheads.com. And after all this racing action, Greg Hodnett is your leader. He has a 215-point lead over Lucas Wolf, 15, Brian Monte. 15-point lead. Oh, sorry, 15-point lead. Uh, over Lucas Wolf, Brian Monteith, Danny Dietrich, and Corey Haas, and uh, that's a great point. Uh, that's a great points battle right there. Yeah, you know it's it's a little strange, I think, because we've been talking about Lucas, we've been talking about Monteith, you know, all these guys, Dietrich picking off wins. Greg Hodnett, I don't think has finished outside the top ten all season long. Look at look at the sheets here, guys. Greg Hodnett didn't even finish out, outside the top five all weekend, so that's why he's you know up front there in the uh, hoseheads.com Central PA points update or. Sandings presented by Champion Racing Oil, but also another name I want to point out here, Anthony Macri, too. Not even out of the top five all weekend long as well. This kid's good. I've been he saying is. it since day one. He hopped in a 410 sprint car. This kid is good. Well, fans, before we get into this week's dirt presented by Williams Grove Speedway, oh, there is a lot of dirt. <laughs> Social media went crazy. On Friday night, as I walked into the famous Williams Grove Speedway, uh, I saw a little poster, a little board hanging uh, where I walk in on the Bear Hill gang side going into turn three. And uh, I'm sure everybody already knows what I'm talking about. I'm not going to read the sign off to you, but if you want to go see it, look at the Bear Hill Gang TV or all of our social media outlets. I took the picture, and I agree. Justin agrees. Bert agrees. Phil agrees. The whole crew here. Uh, Beer Hill Gang TV and PA Spring Car Live agrees with Williams Grove Speedway 110% that you can record videos. There's nothing wrong with recording videos. But, however, you go Facebook Live, you're not helping the track, you're keeping the customer potentially staying home and not buying a ticket. Therefore, you are technically not, not helping supporting your local racetrack. Yeah, um, I've been kind of itching all, all week to get a, a word in edgewise on this here. Here – Here's the thing with the sign. Could it be worded better? I think it could be worded a little bit better. But I, I love the ending, though. I do. I love now. Just grab a beer, bring a bring a friend, exactly. and enjoy the races. That's I love the main it. thing. Come to the races, folks. I mean, can it be worded uh, again? Can it be worded better on the top? Yes, I think it could say no Facebook Live. It couldn't just say no video recording prohibited. Uh -huh. I think that's kind of a little bit misleading to what some of the fans said. Now that being said, take a video, take a Snapchat, no problem whatsoever. I don't see anything with that because you put that up, it kind of helps promote the racing. Now. What I think it's mostly trying to say is don't go live on Facebook for the feature. Don't put the, just, the feature. Just stop, just yeah, stop just broadcasting the entire I want, damn race. I want end you to chime in end here, End of story. Justin. Stop broadcasting the whole race. Um, you know, I, I saw all the arguments. Somebody said, uh, well, I'm, I'm showing my friend, and he's going to come next week. Well, you know what? Um, in the last two days, I've seen a highlight video from Port Royal. I've seen a highlight video from Lincoln. I've seen a highlight video from BAPS. I've seen a highlight video from Williams Grove. They're all out there. Show them. If your friends want to find it, Google it. Get on YouTube. That exists. Everyone knows what a sprint car is. Yeah. I understand people get sick. I understand people live out of state. I understand all those things. But literally, and it's going to piss a lot of people off, frankly, but the only reason why we're arguing about this is because it's free. Yep. End yeah. of story. Because yep. it's free. Yep. Now, is there reasons why maybe you couldn't come and it'd be nice for you to watch a race? Of course. Some races have pay-per-views. Some of them don't. End of story. The track doesn't want it to happen. Yep. Therefore... You know, they don't want you to bring in, um, you know, huge handles of liquor either and glass <laughs> bottles. Do you do that? Well, maybe you sneak them in, but that's your own problem. If you get kicked out, you get kicked out. And that's like throwing beer bad. cans onto the racetrack. You get, I, that's yeah, you. You, get that. you know, it is what it is. No, you're not going to get any sympathy from any of us. No. Uh, and also, think about this. For Dirt Vision, that comes in and broadcasts races. For Speed Shift, mm -hmm. that comes in and broadcasts races. You're also hurting them and they do a lot of promotion work by broadcasting live events and if you go live for free once again you're not hurting the track you're also hurting the broadcasting company yeah you are definitely and some of that money does go back into the track you know for it a lot does. Of them it to does. uh broadcast here i mean don't get us wrong facebook live can be used as a great tool it's been you know it's helped us out here i mean i like to say you know we are all pioneers of facebook live you know what we're doing in central pa with the races because what we started over at Ryan the Cushion and then what came over here to Bureau Gang TV, we kind of know what's going on with all this. We kind of, you know, we're at the forefront when this whole thing broke yeah. with uh, Facebook Live. So we kind of get the understanding that it can be used as a great promotional tool, but also can really hurt tracks. So I think you got to try and find that balance there where it helps tracks like what we're doing, yep. but also you got to make sure that it don't hurt the track by like it's m multiple people going live week in and week out 
for especially the entire race, especially the feature, which which you pay to see. And for the record, I was looking at some of the comments. Uh, when I when we started this whole thing, we all came to agreement that we will never ever, and I mean ever, show any live racing via Beer Hill Gang. TV. So fans that want to throw us on the bus, you're not going to throw me under the bus because I am the bus. Okay? <laughs> so that's not going to happen. And we never, ever showed any live racing footage via our social media outlets. But we're going to end that story. And, folks, whew, all right, now we're into that. Now <laughs> we can actually get into this week's Dirt presented by fired up. Williams Grove Speedway. And, boys, the car uh, – the car count average is somewhat staying stagnant. We are uh, still at around about 23.5. However, at the end of this weekend, I think it's going to go higher. I expect 35 each night at least. No, that's, that's low. You that's, think? No, that's slow. Think about it. We have about 20, 22, 24 regular guys. 20 They're guys bringing in, in 20. I say 40 plus for both Williams Grove and Port Royal. Okay. All right. I can get behind that. So I'm saying 35 in the low end, but 40, you know, right in the, uh, you know, right in the average there. But, uh. Yeah, that should go up pretty uh, pretty quickly this weekend, Earl. And uh, th- this this man is kind of making Bedford, us you're right. look like liars. But Robbie Kendall, fortunately, uh, come Friday afternoon, he goes, man, it's still too cold. Mm-hmm. Don't want to hurt my motors, which we respect that. But however, he tweeted out again this week, looks like the weather is okay. Robbie Kendall should be debuting tomorrow night at the Grove and on Saturday at Port Royal. And I think another guy, the birthday boy today, Ryan Smith. Happy birthday, Ryan. Uh, yes. the show. Uh, he will be debuting this weekend, I believe. Is he in the Warco car or is he going to be in the Phoenix it's, car this it's weekend? The, uh, it's a little bit of both, I think. Okay. You know, a little I bit never, of both. A little bit of both. It's yellow. Yeah, so it's perfect. Yeah, it's all kinds of cut green, you yeah, know. It's whatever. Uh, also, Joe Tranka from New York. Mm-hmm. He's going to be debuting this weekend. So, Joe, we welcome you with uh, – Wide open arms, and we uh, are glad you're kicking your season off uh, with us down here in uh, Central PA country. Also, um, yeah, you know, Joey Saldana, uh, he, he's going to be on the All-Star Tour this year. I don't – I mean, here's the thing. Is he going to be on there full-time, or is he going to kind of run his own schedule? He's entered in both series. He's entered as a World of Outlaw competitor. He's entered as an All-Star competitor. And I don't know what that does in terms of the tow money and all that good stuff and the point funds, but – at the end of the day, they're basically going to pick and choose. They're going to go where the money is. They're going to go where it feels right. Right. And if, uh, you know, if, hell, if, if it doesn't look right for either of them, you might see him here at PA Speed Week. It's really wherever Joey wants to go, and his owner, Kevin Rodine, is really giving them freedom to do that, and I think that's going to enable him to have a really good season. That's good for Joey. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it seems like he's not under a lot of pressure at all. Uh, also, some big breaking news that happened, I think, uh, Wednesday, uh, yesterday, or Tuesday, whenever I get my days mixed up. <laughs> the Brian Clawson yes. Sweet Tower has officially opened up at Knoxville Raceway. It looks beautiful, Earl. Everyone that has contributed, great job by y'all. I'm not sure who did the construction work on it, but they did an amazing job, as always, as everything at Knoxville. They did it big, and they did it right, especially for a man as uh, great as Brian Clawson was. Yeah, for me, uh, good job, Knoxville. My hat's off to you, you guys. Uh, I can't wait to go out there this year and, uh, you know, go on the viewing tower that you have off of turn number two. It's uh, definitely a good thing, and, and I can't wait. Well, race fans, we are going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have last week's winner at Lincoln Speedway, Tyler Rush. Stay tuned. It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. This weekend, the Williams Grove Speedway welcomes in the Arctic at All-Star Circuit of Champions, meant by Mobile One to take on the stars and the cars of the Lawrence Chevrolet 410 Sprint Cars. Can the Pennsylvania Posse keep their unbeaten streak alive versus the All-Stars? Plus, for the first time this season, see the Barry Hill Gang, PA Sprint Series, 305 Sprint Cars in action this Friday night, April 13th. Can't make it this weekend? Log on to SpeedShipTV.com. For a live pay per view all weekend long and stick with us right here on Burial Gang TV for post race interviews and results. The Williamsburg Speedway is just located one mile from the Lisburn Road to exit of Route 15 and minutes from Mechanicsburg and Dillsburg. For more information on upcoming events and up to the minute news, follow Williams Grove on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat or log on to Williamsgrove.com. The Williamsburg Speedway is a proud supporter of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Burial Gang TV. Oh, 
Welcome back, race fans. Joining us on the Moose's LZ Hotline, he got his first ever career 410 sprint car win down at the Lincoln Speedway last Saturday. Tyler S. joins us. Tyler, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Dude, has your uh, win sunken in yet, or are you still, you know, kind of just reliving what happened on Saturday? Uh, it, it's sunk in pretty quick. Um, you get a, I guess you would say, reality check when you go back to the next race, and you just start all over and keep working hard at what we do. Now, obviously, you know, you had the, uh, you got in the accident there at the end of the year. You cut your season a little short. How you feeling health wise? You, uh, you confident? You feeling good about the whole body? Yeah, I'm, I myself feel good. Um, just back to, I guess, starting over, rebuilding confidence in the car and. Um, trying to believe in yourself and you know, do what we do. Believe yep. in yourself. And, sir, when you believe in yourself, you can accomplish anything. And I think you are on a great road of success, my friend. Folks, if you're just tuning in here, right now we have last week's feature winner, Tyler S. He went at Lincoln Speedway. He joins us on the Moose's LZ Hotline. Yes, sir. And if you have any questions, put them in the uh, fully injected motorsports fan zone. Now, let's talk about the race a little bit here, Tyler. I mean, you had to hold off, without doubt, the best of the best at Lincoln. You had to hold off um, – both uh, Brian Monteith and also um, Alan Crimes to get the win. What was going uh, through your head there in the closing laps? Like, oh, my God, I may actually win this. Uh, well, I was – I actually had myself worried. I, I lost pace when I started catching the back of the field. And then uh, when I got the caution with three to go and I looked at the leaderboard, like you said, you know you have Lincoln Speedway's best right behind you. Um, and I, I just – kept running through my head i gotta have three perfect laps somehow and and hope i don't make a mistake and i knew brian and everybody behind me that would race me clean and and make a good race out of it and that's what we did you did make a good race and thanks to your vans uh tyler s is also our sweeney car is a driver of the week powered of high pace performance and a good job tyler All, that was a fan vote and the vans voted for you as well now last year you chose to go or two years ago you chose to go on the all-star tour instead of running here locally what made you know what was going through your mind when you made that decision to go to travel well last year being my first year in a 410 and going with the all-stars um it was it's always been a dream of uh, my brother and mine to to go on the road and race and you know see see what it's like to i guess essentially race on the road and um it was a lot of fun. The people we met, it was incredible um, how they help you, you know, car setups or, you know, if your truck breaks down. Um, it was just it was just a very, very neat experience, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Now you're back. It's 2018. You've got a year under your belt. You know, obviously you're kind of picking up the pieces again and almost starting over, but you have quite the field of drivers. I know the All-Stars increased the purse. There's a lot of money out there for the taking, but you've also got to compete with the likes of Dave Blaney, Carson Macedo, who will be on here in a little bit. Um, you know, Ryan Smith's not going to be there full time, I believe, but you've got a big field of cars. Jack Hoddenshield, what is your thoughts on 2018 and what would be a realistic, successful season for you? Um, my thoughts are it's, it's great. Um, it's good to see what Tony's doing um, for sprint car racing in general and the uh, the All Stars, especially, um, the talent level is amazing, and I would say my goals are just to qualify, and I got to see every checkered flag that you know we take the green in. Absolutely, go ahead, Bert. Now you started in Central PA, Tyler, with the likes of the 600s and also the 358 ranks. What has that done to help you out uh, transition to going on and uh, onto the road, and also with the All Stars uh, Circuit Champion Series? Uh, I would just say, you know. Learning different track conditions, um, racing different, racing some different places around here, but then going out on the road, all the different stuff we actually, you know, get to see and experience, um, and and it it is different. I mean, the the, the 410 is an animal to drive compared to the 600 and stuff, but it's a really neat piece, and I would say it's just, you know, I'm, it's just been stepping stones to help me get to where I want to be. Absolutely. You have come up uh, through the ranks. You just mentioned it. You started out in micro sprints and you went up to 358s and you're in the big, powerful, almighty 410. Is there a big comparison between the, the 358s and the 410s, especially how you drive one another, Tyler? 
Um, yeah, actually, it sounds crazy, but I feel more comfortable in the 410. Um, you know, just with the big wing, and if you're in trouble, you can kind of use the 410 to get yourself out of trouble. Um, and it, it just holds you so much more left. Nice. Anyways, uh, so, you know, was there ever a thought after the accident that maybe you guys wouldn't be back for this season, that maybe you'd scale back or maybe you'd take a break? You know, was your confidence ever shook enough that you said, all right, maybe we need to look at this a different way? Um, I, you question stuff. I wouldn't say it ever really shook my confidence level. I know my wife, my mom, dad, and especially my brother, um, are behind me 100 percent and it's always been kind of up to me if i want to get back in they'll be behind me and push me and you know that goes for my sponsors and all my friends and family like i said that are involved um that it's pretty much been up to me um if i want to get back in or not and i i, I want to i love it it's what i want to do so I, I i feel comfortable i just i just need to get back in the rhythm now um I got to win here in Central PA now. What is your remaining goals for this year? I know that's got to be a huge check or a check mark on your list of uh, goals for this year. But what does uh, the rest of the season goals wise look like for you? Um, kind of like I said, I, I we got to make the features um, with the tough field cars that we got. Um, I know last year on average we had forty six cars a, a night with the All Stars. Um, now the twenty cars that we have are you know, like you guys had said, some really good drivers. So we just got to qualify for features and, and see every checkered flag that we take the green in. Now, you said 46 cars average for the All-Stars. In your mind, do you think that the – what's the better series right now? Do you think the All-Stars is the better series or the World of Outlaw Cross Sprint Car Series? What do you think is the comparison between the two series right now? I would say they're both great series. It's just if – if you're a working man and got to work to to run sprint cars, you're probably gonna you're gonna be driven towards the all stars because uh, you know me and my brother still hold a 40 hour a week job and go do the all stars. Um, you know like we got to take off for Ohio Speed Week and some of the long trips we have to miss like a Friday and a Monday, but you know we can still work a job and race and that's how we can afford to race. And where if you're with the outlaws, you're pretty much committed to to be with the outlaws and race. Absolutely. Now, Tyler, say we look uh, five, ten years down the road. Where do you see yourself? Obviously, you still want to run four tens, but do you still see yourself running with the All Stars? Maybe potentially going with the World of Outlaws, or maybe hey, if a NASCAR deal comes in, do you have any ambition of running NASCAR? Well, that, like you said, that's a loaded question. Um, I'm going to shoot down the NASCAR thing right away. I, I don't want to run any asphalt stuff. I want to um, stay in dirt. That's where my heart's at is the dirt open wheel cars. And um, as far as, you know, five, ten years down the road, it's definitely a dream of mine and my brothers that we want to at least try the World Outlaw Tour, whether it's one year or, you know, make it as long as you can and, so we can't make it anymore. So who knows? We'll see where we end up and what happens. Now, finally, you know, obviously to do this whole deal, you've got quite a few sponsors on board. Who do you have to thank for making this deal happen for you? You know, I know you mentioned your parents and your family, but what sponsor wise do you have to thank for everything you've got? I got to thank uh, Kevin Cork race where, um, RRI designs, um, diversified machine, uh, Rayco, uh, lap lumber company, Auto Details by Sue, Bud Springs, uh, Premier Auto Works, Affordable Self Storage, um, Kissler Racing Engines, Maxim Chassis, Kaiser Wheels, um, my brother especially. Um, he puts a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. A lot of his, uh, a lot of his, all, most of all his times there. And, you know, saying that goes with my parents and, and even my wife and just the support of all the friends and family that help us to where we are today and um, Weaver's Garage. And just if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. And, and everybody that told me got here, the support of the fans has been unreal too. Well, hey, you got the main ones in. You got the uh, you got your mom, your dad, your brother, and your wife. Those are the three main ones you got to get in for people to thank. But. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, for sure. If I forget, if I forget any of them, I'd probably be in trouble. But <laughs> well, hey, I wouldn't got... be here. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. So. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, when you think about doubt. it, you are right, sir. Well, we saw you in victory lane once last week. You know, you've got hopefully three shots this week, twice here in the Central PA region. And, uh, you know, we wish you the best of luck. We thank you for joining us. And if all goes as planned, we'll see you again on the front stretch sometime this weekend. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tyler. Good luck this weekend. Tyler Rez won last weekend. He's looking to get a couple more feature wins underneath his belt this year. And, and Tyler, great kid. Oh, great kid, without a doubt. And a lot of talent behind the young kid. Um, I think, you know, still got a little bit of learning to do like everyone does. But, yet, I think once he gets everything figured out, I think this weekend proved he can win is a, 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 a winning race car. You know, Justin, Lincoln's a small track compared to the tracks that they're going to be starting off this year. Yeah, it's going to be a little different for him. Um, and I think that's where you're going to see, I don't want to say the inexperience, but you're going to see that rust come off. Some of these guys who are more familiar with these tracks week in, week out. I mean, a Dave Blaney can come in here after a year or two absence, frankly, and <laughs> come in and put on a show. I mean, yeah. he knows what he's doing. Um, not to say Tyler doesn't know what he's doing, but – it might take him a little more to get adjusted, and I think that's where he's kind of got the deck stacked against him. Yeah, he, he does. He truly does, but uh, he has uh, he, he toppled the stack uh, last week, so we're just going to have to see what he has tomorrow night. Well, folks, we're going to take another quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have a uh, kid from California, Carson Macedo. Stay tuned. Good evening, race fans. Derek Snyder here from Pace Performance. Pace Performance is your complete source for all of your automotive needs. The nation's leading retailer of Chevy Performance Parts is also home to thousands of aftermarket performance parts, regardless of your vehicle's manufacturer. Visit PacePerformance.com to shop 24-7 and see the largest selection at one convenient location. And thank you for tuning in to Beer Hill Gang TV. Sweeney Cars is proud to support Beer Hill Gang TV in 2018. Stay tuned to find out who is Sweeney Cars Driver of the Week. Powered by Pace Performance, Sweeney Cars, located in Youngstown, Ohio, has been the leading dealer for new Chevy, Buick, and GMCs for over 95 years. Sweeney Cars has an unbeatable selection of over 900 new and certified used cars. Top-rated customer service makes Sweeney your go-to for your next car or truck purchase. Sweeney is also a Pace Performance dealer for high-performance parts. To browse the latest selection or schedule an appointment, log on to SweeneyCars.com. And welcome back, race fans. Joining us on the program, hopefully he's on his way here, but he's coming all the way from Lamore, California, driver of Joe Gertie's number 3G for this weekend, Mr. Carson Macedo. Carson, thanks for coming back on the show, bud. Yeah, happy to be back on. Really, uh really enjoy your guys' show, watch it very often, so uh, happy to be a part of it. We uh, we actually are on our way to Pennsylvania now, so driving down the road, so hopefully you can hear me okay uh, on the phone. Yeah, we uh, we can hear you loud and clear, Carson. Once again, thank you for coming back, and thank you for uh, watching us uh, weekly. We know you're a big fan of the show, but hey, you're coming in, starting off the All-Star uh, Circuit of Champions uh, Tour this weekend. How do you feel coming into these big events? Uh, we're really excited. Uh, myself, Joe Gertie, Tim Norman, uh, his wife Cindy, and uh, their son Alex. We're, we're all headed to the racetrack, and you know we're uh, we're excited for the season ahead. Doing the whole All Star Circuit of Champions deal is, uh, is is pretty cool for this team. Uh, going into last year, I think we ran about you know 46 races, so the schedule is somewhat similar on on the amount of races that we're going to run. Uh, it's just a little bit more traveling, and obviously going to some new places. Uh, I've never been to Williams Grove or Port Royal, so um, there's obviously just some places on the schedule that are new that are tough places that I, I get to uh, go see. So I'm really excited about that. Um, big step for this team. A lot of people have come on board to make this year happen. So uh, we're, we're, to say we're excited is, you know, to say the least. Now, last year, I know you mentioned you were there was a couple shows, you know, in the Tusky 50. You, you were trying to get a ride. You'd love to come in here. It didn't work out. But not only are you you're coming into Central PA with one of the biggest and best fields you're probably going to see all season long, but you've got 19 other guys who are vying for that All-Star Championship. What's your thoughts going into this season, and how confident are you about this operation and what you guys can accomplish this year? Uh, I'm, I, I have, you know, I always have high hopes for myself and the Gertie team. Uh, Joe Gertie, Tim Norman, and, and the people that are involved in this team, I think, are the most important piece that we have. 
just uh, Joe. Joe obviously raced with the World of Outlaws and did you know some time with the All Stars. And Tim actually spent Tim Norman actually spent a whole season out there racing with with the All Stars. You know himself. So uh, to have that knowledge behind me and to be able to travel to these tracks with an idea of what to do is huge. And I think that um, I think that we'll have a good shot at, at the championship. And at, you know our goal is to just take it night by night. Um, we really haven't sat down and thought about the whole picture you know i feel like if you just go in night by night perform at your best that uh hopefully everything works out and, you know we'll be close to uh contending at the end uh, there's some really good competition this year with the all-star circuit of champions uh they've done a really good job to put some great teams on the road and i'm just excited for the, the competition to travel around to see new places and uh to better myself as a driver uh i i guess uh, you know, I think that we have a good shot, but it's going to take hard work. And obviously, uh, with the field that we have, it's not going to be easy. Oh, oh, without a doubt, it's one of the toughest series in the country. Now, for you fans listening to us here on the Moose's LZ hotline right now, we have Carson Macedo. And if you guys have any questions for him, put them in the fully ejected motorsports fan zone down below. Now, last time we talked to you, Carson, you were in sunny California for the uh, Budweiser Oval Nationals. Uh, for the USAC Angelo National Sprint Car Series. And it seems like you're bringing some of that uh, warm weather mojo out towards us this weekend here uh, with near 80 degrees temperatures. Uh, and weather's been a big part of your season so far, I believe. Uh, what's the start of the season been like, especially with a lot of the rainouts you had out in the West Coast there? Yeah, so it's funny because the weather's just been crazy this year. Um, you know, I, I went to Australia and I raced over there with Sean Blitzky Dyson. Uh, for three months and did the World Series sprint car thing and really had a pretty successful season with them. With them and I uh, had a lot of fun. I've never ran that many races over there and um, to, to run that many races and again, I mean, we run a World Series. We saw a lot of new tracks that we haven't had been to. So um, I had a lot of fun over there and obviously the weather was beautiful the whole time I was there. Uh, so to come home and have it be so rainy and just you know, it's really made the month of March hard and. You know, so far, obviously, the month of April, the first weekend uh, with the All Stars got rained out. So uh, I'm just, I'm just pretty happy to look at the forecast and see some nice weather on the radar, so that we can get on the racetrack and you know get this year kicked off. But uh, you know, the, we, we race. I raced out in California at the beginning of this year. You know, through the whole month of March with the Tarleton Racing Team. Um, Tarleton Motorsports has been probably one of the biggest influences in my career so far, and I. They gave me my start in sprint car racing, and um, so to come home and race with them is always pretty special. Uh, we were supposed to compete in all seven of the Outlaw events on the West Coast, um, I think starting in Tulare, California, and then we were supposed to end in Bakersfield. Uh, we ended up with, I think, four rainouts, so we only ended up running seven races, but you know, we, we ran really good. We had some decent results. We had a couple top fives, and I think an eighth, so... Uh, I mean, nothing to hang our hat on. We were, you know, hang our head down about. We were, we were pretty happy to walk away with some decent finishes, and um, just bummed that we didn't get to race more. Uh, another thing I got to do was drive for Jason Myers, and he has his own car now, and himself and HB Mind have a 360 that they've acquired together, and so I got to go down to Watsonville and kind of run a local show with him. We ended up running third. Kind of had some flashes that maybe, you know, win in the race, but just fell back i made a few mistakes late in the race but that was pretty cool jason's somebody that i've looked up to and so to race with him was uh, a really cool experience but no um, you know i had a blast racing with charlton on the west coast and um, they've actually stepped up and became a huge supporter this year of the 3g team and so i'm really thankful for that too now i don't know if you know this but the all-star circuit of champions have a big old offer when it comes to Williams Grove Speedway. They have mm -hmm. never defeated the Pennsylvania Posse. This is your first trip coming in here. Well, they never defeated them at Williams Grove. It's your first trip coming in here, not only as a member of the All-Stars, but as a driver, period. What would it mean for you to pick up that win and break that streak and start your season off with a win at Williams Grove? Oh, man. Well, I would say just by the statistics that you just named, that would be an inc a pretty incredible accomplishment. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I guess I never go to a race thinking that, I'm, you know, I go there to run second. Like, uh, you always go there with the ambition to win the race. But, um, you know, we're realistic, and we know that uh, Pennsylvania is a tough place to go. And there's a lot of really good locals. You know, I mean, obviously, watch a lot of videos, a lot of uh, old races, archives of races in the past. And 
there's just so many good drivers in Central Pennsylvania. There's so much good competition. Obviously, you guys you know how know that, but um, I mean Lance Deweese and Greg Hodnett, a lot of Lucas Wolf, all these guys. You know, obviously they're going to be there joining the 20 All Stars. And I mean, realistically, the the All Stars list is, has some pretty good names on it too. So um, to win these races, you know, either one of these races this weekend. Um, Williams Grove, Fort Royal, or even Bedford would be would be a pretty cool accomplishment. Uh, I know how hard it is to win in Pennsylvania, and so to win an All Star race and to kick off the first race of the season and win a race would be really really cool. So uh, we're going to put our best foot forward, and I guess just see what happens. Now, you know, you just mentioned that you were watching some you know free uh, race highlight videos to try to see what the track does to competition and all that, and I commend you on that, but. How much are you going to lean on Joe, you know, Joe Gertie, folks, is his car owner. How much are you going to lean on Joe? Because he's no stranger to the Central PA circuit here. Yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I always lean on him. Um, probably one of my biggest, uh, you know, assets of driving for the team is just being able to, you know, get that knowledge that Joe has, at, you know, as a, that he, he was obviously a successful driver, spent a lot of years out on the road, and, uh, he's been to a lot of these tracks several several amounts of times, so I'll lean on him a lot, mostly for advice. Um, he's obviously the crew chief of the car too. You know, between him and Tim Norman, they kind of put a package together and send me out there. And usually they usually they get my race car pretty good, and I'm always really thankful for that. You know, so um, Joe's definitely an asset. And I'm I'm going to lean on him as much as I can and try and get as much information as I can out of him. Uh, but no, I'm mean, going into the weekend. You know, I've made some phone calls, talked to a couple people. And, you know, I just gave uh, Jason Myers a phone call last night, and just kind of picked his brain a little bit. And you know, going to these races, you want to get as much advice and all the help you can get. Um, they obviously are two that have had a lot of success at this place. So um, a lot of hints, a lot of advice. But I mean, but realistically, the only way you're going to get better is going there and and doing the things yourself and kind of figuring out. Um, how to get around the place yourself. I, I know Williams Grove is a different type of place. Uh, it's definitely got some special characteristics. So uh, we just got to go there. We just got to make laps and, 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 and try and be be good as quick as we can be. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, you're talking about some of the tracks you haven't seen, especially this weekend, like Bedford, like Williams Grove, and like Port Royal. Is there any other tracks on the tour this year that you're looking forward to going to for the first time? Um. You know, probably, you know, when I, when I, over the off season, when I sat down and said that I pretty much put my mind to racing with the All-Stars full-time this year, you know, I was probably going to realistically do whatever uh, to make that down and sort of figure out what we need as a team for resources to get there. And our focus was getting out here to come to Central Pennsylvania. Um, I haven't really ran at all in Central PA other than in a midget uh, in 2016 with Keith Coons. So uh, I just know that at, at some point in my career, I you know hopefully very soon would like to be out with the Will of Outlaws. And in order to do that, Central Pennsylvania is a big, you know, they come there I think twice or if I'm not, at least twice I know. And so, you know, I, I just, I want to be, I know how hard it is to be good at those racetracks when you didn't grow up there. And so I, I would say um, they're probably at the top of my list, uh, but there is a lot of other tracks. You know, I've never been to New York really and raced. I have been to New York, just kind of traveled through to drive for a team out of New York, actually Trey Hodding. Um, but I, I've never raced in New York, so that I think that will be really cool. Um, the, all, the All-Stars also travel out west to Iowa to, to race, I think, at Jackson. And I raced a little bit in Knoxville last year, but um, we've, kind of put together some new packages in our program engine wise and things like that so to go back out to Knoxville and kind of give it a second shot and race with the all-stars I think I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that I know Jackson I've never been to uh, there's just a lot of tracks on the east side more so than anything that I haven't been to you know New York Pennsylvania um, I've done a lot of racing in Ohio a lot of racing in Indiana so for the most part all them tracks I've been to but uh, just looking forward to getting out east more than anything. Now, finally, you know, you you got a good car owner. You've got some good names on the side of that car. Who do you have to thank for making these uh, dreams possible for you in 2018? 
Yeah, so I, there's been a lot of people that um, have come on board, you know, late, right as the season sort of started. Uh, one of the biggest probably, well, three of the biggest probably would be um, Sean Dyson with the Fleet Parts and Equipment. He's the guy that I drive for in Australia. Him and his wife, Felicity, are very close with, you know, to me. I, I uh, have a blast over there every time I go down and drive for them. And um, Sean really stepped up for us coming into this year and, big supporter of this team this year and uh without him i don't know if we could have been able to make it happen you know and then obviously like i mentioned earlier the, the Charlton family tommy charlton tom charlton um with the help of them and actually uh, larry moles to be farm they kind of put a deal together to help us get out here this year uh it's, it's really really thankful for what they've been able to do you know larry uh larry moles is, moles is a uh a sponsor also on the 93 that Sheldon Honshill drove with the All-Stars and, um, you know, actually pretty much was the one that put him out on the Outlaw Tour. And um, now I think he's going to sponsor the number three that Jack's driving this year with the All-Stars. So Larry's a, a you know, a big-time supporter of sprint car racing. So to have him on the side of the race car, it was really, really cool. And we appreciate you know, him and his wife, Jennifer, and everything that they're doing for this team this year. Um, Tommy and Tom Carlton, obviously, uh, big supporters of mine over the years. Happy to have him on and really cool that they came on board like they did um also our performance eagle ignition leads mary Jane and robert from eagle are awesome people and they've stepped up again for us this year shepherd chevrolet um you know there's just so many things on this car that make this thing happen and or xyz machining obviously with tim and cindy norman um but you know we're really excited for this year we got a lot of great supporters and we're uh where we just hope that we can represent them well and you will, but first of all, I got to throw a red flag out here, real quick. And uh, I'm going down through my notes here, Carson, and I see uh, one of your favorite places to eat is In and Out Burger. Is that correct? That's right, man. 100%. All right, sir. Let's well, vote. listen up. All right, when you guys go up to Port Royal, depending on which way you go, okay, I'm going to give you a little hint. Oh, I know where this is going. And you know right exactly. Oh, yeah. You know right where this is going. Yeah, it's for some milkshakes. If you guys go up Route 322. The Port Royal, okay? Uh -huh. There is a kick-ass burger joint called Red Rabbit, all right? It's Red Rabbit Drive-In. It's old Better school. Better than In-N-Out? What's that? Better than In-N-Out? Bro, yeah, just wait. Have you it had In-N-Out? Oh, In-N-Out's good. I, I, no doubt about it. Yes, uh, In-N-Out, they have them out west. Right. It, it's good stuff, no doubt about it. But when, when you guys, if you guys go up 322, look this up in your GPS when you get off the show with us. It's called Red Rabbit Drive-In. Make sure you get yourself a big old juicy bunny burger, all right? It's going to melt in your mouth, not in your hands. Make sure you get extra bunny dust on your french fries, maybe a little extra secret sauce on the burger, maybe get a milkshake. <laughs> yeah, don't Bro, forget the milkshake. Don't forget the milkshake. It is kick-ass. <laughs> and then I want to hear you on social media. Tag us on Twitter. Take a picture of your big old bunny burger when you eat at Red Rabbit. Let us know how it is, all right? Because you will not be right. disappointed, sir. All right, I'll check it. I'll have to check it out, man. In and out is a hard burger to top, but <laughs> if you say it's that good, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to stop there and we're gonna have to see what it's all about. That's the coolest part, right? Going to new places. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, and and, and cool you guys, uh, like that. yeah, for sure, dude. And uh, if you love burgers like rest of us here on the set, uh, you're gonna love uh, Red Rabbit. Oh, trust me. Hang around us for a little bit. You'll be. Oh. Uh, He'll be uh, a little bit bigger coming out of Central PA. I think we're getting her uh, resized for the suit there, bud, leaving uh, Central PA. be hanging around us too long. <laughs> well, I love me some burgers, so me, Joe, and uh, Jim and the team will have to give them a try. Oh, yes, you will. No doubt about it. Carson, thank you very much for uh, coming on the show and bringing the warm weather with you all from uh, Sunside Cali. And uh, good luck this weekend, and uh, we'll catch up with you here in the pit area tomorrow at the Grove. Sounds good, guys. Hey, thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure, and uh, looking forward to the next time. No doubt about it. Thank you, bud. Thanks, Carson. All right, take it easy. Carson Macedo just getting off the Moose's LZ hotline. <laughs> hey, I hope he stops that red rabbit, buddy. Watch it. Those milkshakes come back and bite you.
Yeah, they yes, do. they can. They in all kinds of sort of ways. I'm excited for this young man to come in here. Like we said at the top of the show, long resume, a uh, great young driver. This Joe Gary number three car is a fast hot rod, and I think we got a good shot. I'm going to say not the Grove. I mean, it would be pretty cool if he would, but I think at Port Royal, uh, he could turn some heads up there, and I wouldn't be surprised him parking on the shit house. Okay? Yep, no doubt about it. It's going to be a great one. Now, Once again, thank you, Carson. I'm not saying that an all-star can't, or Carson can't win at the Grove. I'm just saying that I'm pretty confident that – we got to keep the streak up going uh, at the Grove this year for the All Star. Ah, let's buck the streak. Oh no, 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 let's no, no, buck no, 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 no. Let's we get an All Star no. victory lane tomorrow at the Grove. Come on, Bert. Uh, am I hearing this right? Am Come I on. Hearing, am I hearing this? Let's right? change history. Ooh. Oh, I don't know about that. All right. right. Well, we'll just have to find out. I but, guess uh, we just will. Hey, how about we just go to the races and find out? Hey, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a gorgeous why not, night. folks? Uh, real quick, you're located in the fully injected motorsports fan zone. Let's give Tyler Rush and Carson Macedo a big old. Uh, Thumbs up for t- taking some time out of their busy schedule and joining us on the show. And we're going to take one more quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have our Orange Crate Weekend Previews. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Tyler Altmaier, and I am the owner and founder of Fully Injected Motorsports and FullyInjected.com, a professional short track PR firm that has been in operation since 2010. Headquartered in western Pennsylvania, Fully Injected Motorsports focuses primarily on providing professional-grade press to motorsports teams, racetracks, and organizations all throughout the country, keeping your fans and other racing enthusiasts up to date with breaking news, event schedules, and recent race results. Our original content and mass distribution service is sure to keep your sponsors, as well as your team's biggest supporters, in the loop and on track. For more information, contact us today at FullyInjected.com. Now, back to PA Sprint Car Live on Beer Hill Gang TV. Hey, race fans, this is Blake Anderson, the voice of the Arctic Cat All Star Circuit of Champions, and you're watching PA Sprint Car Live on Beer Hill Gang TV. And welcome back, everyone, here to PA Sprint Car Live right here on Beer Hill Gang TV. My name is Bert Wojcik alongside me, as always, Earl Hoon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, as Blake Anderson brings us back from break, what a tie. And also, by the way, there is another. Uh, there is another tie into some of our uh, spots we had last year. Danny Holtgraver's also making his uh, return this weekend, I believe. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so Good job for Danny. Fourth. I tell you what, uh, I'm, I, before we get into our Orange Crate Weekend preview, I, I, I mean, I'm super excited for this weekend. Not only are we <laughs> going to have great weather, sunny, check. 80 degrees, check one. The car counts are going to be amazing. Check two. We're going to have a lot of travelers and Long behold, the Pennsylvania Posse better keep up with it. You're damn right. They better, and I think they will starting tomorrow night at the Williams Grove Speedway for the Arctic at All-Star Circuit. The champions event by Mobile One, the Tommy Hendershits Memorial for the uh, uh, Lawrence Chevrolet 410 Sprint Cars, paying 5000 to win tomorrow night. Alongside them will be the uh, Bureau Game PA Sprint Series 305 Sprint Cars as well. The Tommy, a very uh, historic race at the Grove here, um, honoring one of the legends of the track. And uh, I think we are looking for a great night of racing tomorrow night, Earl. Yeah, no doubt about it. Tommy Henderson's a lot of uh, history in Central PA, and especially at Williams Grove Speedway. And, and this name has gone through a couple of name changes. It used to be the Early Bird Championship mm-hmm. uh, way back in the day. And it was never sanctioned by uh, All-Stars until a couple years ago. But it always uh, brought in some of the great talent around America. Then uh, Saturday... We're going to stick with the Arctic Cat All-Star Circuit. Oh, nope. Go oh, ahead. Keep that graphic Sorry, right I there. I kept it up there. That's you know, fine. I just, ha- I just have it in order here, folks. So. Absolutely. Everybody's, uh, some people are going to go down to the Lincoln Speedway in Hanover, Pennsylvania to join the Lawrence Chevrolet 410 Sprint Cars along with the Kreutzer Aluminum Wheels 358 Sprint Cars and the Street Socks. That is going to be a great three-division show at Lincoln Speedway. Yeah, but I think most, no offense to anyone down Lincoln, but I think most of us are going to take the trip up 322 to the fabulous Port Royal Speedway to Speed Palace for the Arctic had also our circuit of champions, the Keith Kaufman Classic for the Wiker Livestock 410 Sprint Cars, 5000 a win, and also the opener for the Moonshine Camel Wrap 35 Showdown for the River Valley Builders Super Late Models. I tell you what, this is going to be awesome, Earl. Yes, it's going to be a great show. Don't forget that we are going to have a live pre-race show on Speed Shift TV, uh, their Facebook page, and other social media outlets. We're going to go live at 3.30 Saturday, we're going to have Steve O'Neill. We scheduled Keith Kaufman. Oh, probably we're going to have the winner of uh, tomorrow night's A Main uh, feature event at Williams Grove Speedway. So we got a star studded list for our pre race show at Port Royal Speedway starting at 3 30. Yes, sir. I can't wait for this. this I, I have not been to Port Royal yet this year. I'm so looking forward to get out there. 
check out the Speed Palace. Check everything out out there. And also, of course, uh, last but not least, if the weather cooperates, Bedford uh, for the Arctic had also a circuit championship by Mobile One and also Pure Socks running there. I kind of want to get out to Bedford. Yeah, to Bedford's see. always a good time to get out. It's an old school uh, fairgrounds racetrack. A lot of history there. That was a great race last year. Brian Brown comes in there. Sweet the weekend, not only between there and Seals Grove. Great job by Brownie and the entire team last year. But, um, yeah, it was so cool to get out there. Hey, maybe I see our friend Kylie out there at Bedford. That's her home track. That is our home track. We're actually going to see her all weekend. Yes, we will. She'll be helping us out here. So uh, do you want to do a little preview tonight for Williams Grove? Since uh, Sure. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? We're going to so. be busy. Uh, we might as well preview tomorrow night again. Go well, ahead. I'll tell you what. Tommy Harris' memorial for the Willi- or for the Articat All-Star Circuit. Chance man by Mobile One. I might as well ask you, by the way, Hold Earl. On. Well, hang on. What the hell is this? Hang on a second. <laughs> what the hell is this? Happy birthday <laughs> Earl, Happy birthday his birthday is this Saturday at Port you. Royal. So we uh, we uh, got with uh, his uh, girlfriend Sarah, and we uh, came up with this beautiful PA Sprint Car live cake for his birthday this weekend. So happy birthday, bud! Thank you very much, guys. That uh, means a lot for me. Three, uh, Justin had to leave here real quick. Um, but yeah, I'll be working on my birthday uh, on Saturday. Yeah, but you at least you know you get a nice job on your birthday. It yeah. even has the logo on it. It does. It's uh, a beautiful cake. Sarah did a hell of a job on that. You, I, you guys. Who's Cameron? Cameron. Oh! oh. <laughs> I hate you so much. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, folks, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, uh, anyway, who do you think got the hot shoot tomorrow night? The Williams go Speedway for the uh, Tommy Harris just Memorial. Man, that's going to be a tough one. You know, the, the field is going to be stacked. Uh, obviously, one of the favorites makes the week. He's going to be favorite. Danny. He's coming off good. Uh, time trials mean everything. Hey, to be honest, I'm hoping maybe an all-star knocks the posse off and they can get their first career win or first all-star win at Blue Grove. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool to see, but uh, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to go with the man who has some bad luck at the Grove so far this year, but I think he's going to turn it around this coming weekend. Brian Monteith picks up the win at the Grove this Friday night. Uh, first first uh, win there this season. Phil, what do you think? Thing. Yeah, take a mic first. Uh, PBR. Hey, that's <laughs> a good answer. I love it. Hey, fans, don't the forget. The beer wins every night. The beer, the beer does win. Night. Don't forget, fans, uh, we also have Twitter at Beer Hole Gang TV. Also, subscribe to our YouTube page at PA Sprint Car Live. And also, you can look us up on our website at www.pasprintcarlive.com. But as tradition, this beer is for you. We'd like to thank all you fans for tuning in every Thursday night and supporting us. And we will support you and the local race tracks. We'll see everybody this weekend at the dirt track. Woo! Happy birthday, buddy. Oh, it's really cold today. <laughs> <laughs> There's no music playing, but hey, we're still playing. Hey,